Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, today I have Caitlin Brower on the line, and she's a social media manager over at Sterling. Caitlin, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here today. Oh my gosh, I'm excited to have you on the show today. <laughs> I know your specialty, B2B social media marketing uh, for LinkedIn. A lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives listening to this right now. Some are using LinkedIn, some are not using it the way they should be, and we're going to help them with that. I shouldn't say we, you're going to help them with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into that, I do want to um, give the audience a little bit of an overview of what you're doing over at Sterling. Tell us a little bit more about the agency, please. Absolutely. Um, so uh, Sterling is a background screening and identity services organization. Um, so I was brought onto the, uh, the content marketing team around nine months ago to really build up their social media strategy and to make sure that um, it's streamlined across all of their verticals and regions. So that's how we go to market um, from a vertical and regional standpoint. So really developing a social strategy that hits all those areas it's all of the services, um, everything like that. So again, about nine, 10 months in, and I'm very, very pleased with where our strategy is right now. We keep um, continuing to succeed. Our progress, our performance on social organically is uh, performing tremendously. Um, I'm very proud. And, you know, we're moving into our next phase of the strategy right now where it's really arming our employees to make sure that they're on social media, whether it's our sellers, you know, our product experts, um, our marketers, you know, they're on social media, not only building up their personal brand, but really showcasing and being advocates for Sterling as well. Um, so that's a bit, a bit of a background there. Um, I have been in B2B marketing for about six and a half years now, specifically social media. Um, LinkedIn is my specialty, given B2B is a huge stomping ground for B2B organizations. So I've really developed my expertise over that over the past six and a half years or so. Um, but yeah, so that's just a quick Quick background, quick overview of me, the company I work for. Man, that's awesome. And uh, and at the end, I'm going to give uh, um, the you an opportunity, of course, to leave the con contact information for Sterling for anybody that would like to learn more about the company, um, just so that the right types of individuals do follow up uh, with your associates there. Uh, what, what are the type of clients that are usually a good fit for Sterling? So we are, so it's honestly, um, we do, I did mention that we are verticalized. Um, so mm -hmm. we do, we help industries such as healthcare, uh, the gig economy, retail, staffing, manufacturing. It's really, uh, <laughs> it's all across the board. Um, but again, we are background screening and identity services. Um, so it's really, you know, an end to end, um, you know, the needs that you, you know, the needs that you need. I know that sounds <laughs> sounds funny. The needs that you need, though, for um, you know your screening program, um, you know, awesome. as an organization. Yep. So uh, let's switch it up a bit. So I do want to go into some of the nuances of B2B social media marketing. Um, where do you want to start with this? Because LinkedIn, it's a big deal. And I mean, at my company, I mean, we use this um, all, I can't even tell you how much that we leverage it for, for what we do. Um, where do you want to start with this one? It's a big topic. Yeah, it is a huge topic. And I think the most important thing for anyone that's listening, if you're on the fence about LinkedIn, you're not in your B2B organization and you're not, you know, putting uh, everything into the LinkedIn basket, you need to. And that's my simple advice. Um, I had said this before, it is a B2B organization stomping ground. You get so much. It's no longer just people on LinkedIn posting their resumes. It's not like that anymore. It really is an area for B2B organizations. And you see consumer brands on there as well. Um, but B2B brands, you know, they're, they're competitive on there. And you really can do so many things to showcase to your audience, you know, what does your organization do? What are the problems that you're going to be solving? You could do all of that. And then again, you can showcase your employees, showcase that brand, uh, everything like that. And you can do it in so many different ways. So again, if you're on the fence or you're questioning it, or you're not spending too much time on it as an organization, you need to be. 
What are some, um, and you don't have to name any specific companies or anything like that, and I know um, this will range in terms of an answer, but I do know that um, being on LinkedIn and kind of leveraging it as much as you do for Sterling, I don't think that a lot of organizations that are using LinkedIn maybe know if they're doing it properly. They're doing it because they're told they're supposed to do it. What are some of the things that you <laughs> see um, that people do effectively on there that you're like, oh, that's sharp or, oh, that's good? So you, companies really need to find a balance um, of different mm. types of content that they're putting out there. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you need to be explaining to your audience how you can help them. So what is the solution that, you know, the end-all, be-all solution that your organization is selling? How does that help people? So it's at the end of the day, when you're putting a piece of content out, understanding how is this going to help my audience and potential new audience. So always asking yourself that question. So the companies that I see succeeding are doing that. I understand why they're posting an article, an ebook, a video, an infographic. I know why they're posting it because they're trying to help me. They're trying to make me understand why I should invest in their product. Um, so striking a balance between, you know, you can promote your services. That's totally fine. It's a, a sales-friendly platform. So I know a couple of other social media platforms, some people don't want to get too salesy, see, or maybe as a consumer, you don't want to see salesy messaging. Um, LinkedIn, that's fair game. You've got to be out there selling. Your brand is selling, but also your sales teams, they're out there social selling too. Um, so that's totally fine. Um, the companies that are doing it really well, they're really utilizing a lot of different, you know, types of content. So it's an article. You're looking at thought leadership, you know, a blog part on your website. You're looking at infographics or small little gifs or info bites, things like that. Those are really eye-catching, and they're short and sweet and to the point, but they provide a lot of information. Videos. Um, I believe there's a 10-minute limit on videos. Get some captions on there, and people are going to really try to engage with everything on there. But then not just like the type of content, but also, you know, what is it actually saying? So making sure you have a mix of sales, thought leadership, um, you know, customer service, maybe some FAQs you can answer for your audience, showcasing your employees. So your employer brand is super important as well. You want to get people to come work for your company. You want to have the best of the best people working for your brand. So make sure you're showcasing your employees out there. I've found that super successful posts or companies that are doing it well, they showcase employees um, on an individual basis, giving them Q&As to answer, um, showcase office space. What will a uh, potential new employee see on your page? wow, they have a great office in New York City. That looks great. I can envision myself working there. Hey, I just saw them post three employees in marketing. I think I would get along with those people great. Um, so it's really kind of looking at all the types of content that you can get out there that, again, are showcase is showcasing you know, how you can help your audience. What are you providing to your audience? Man, you are so on point, Caitlin. Sterling is lucky <laughs> to have you. You had no, because <laughs> it's you. so funny. Because even with us, like I'm like we go, and, and to me and for everybody listening, whatever I I I, I complain about this all the time. I'm like, oh, it's such a headache. So many different types of content, and how you can do this <laughs> and that. So get this. So we were, I mean, we put out between like 60 and 80 episodes a week, and that's for every single week, like clockwork on on our podcast show. Seven different shows about to be eight, and and still we have to figure out different ways to deliver different content. So now I, I, I shouldn't say I have to start. I get to start doing these videos and now I have to start writing blog posts too. And it's because it's all, yeah. we're not, we're not adding those different types of content and people are asking that they want to hear directly from my voice, not just an interview. And I'm like, really? Come on. <laughs> but you're right. You're you're dead right. And I'm speaking for the for the um business owners and entrepreneurs out there listening that are like, ah, we know. Well, hey, I'm with you. I know too, and it is my business and I still but Caitlin's on. Every single point you said different <laughs> types of content, different lengths, different ways to engage and the employee part, I feel like so many people um 
forget and or miss that part. And it's, it's, yeah. it's hard because in the past, that's a big, that's a big change, right? In mindset in the past, you would never, it's always been the brand. Like you have to, you've got to put up the brand or maybe the CEO, right? Like that's it, the brand, the product, and maybe mm-hmm. the CEO, if it was a more progressive company. But now it's like, you have to, you, you don't have to, it's a good idea to do these other things so that people feel immersed in your company. And especially for B2B where you think about it, you're like, well, we sell a software or, oh, we sell this and it's like why do, people don't want to know about our employees yes they do they want to feel like yes, they're part they of that do. company yes they absolutely. do it's all changed absolutely yeah you need that too especially from and i always like i love the the argument of like b2b and b2c like you know you're all selling to people but for a mm-hmm. business to business organization if i buy a candy bar and i don't like it it's on me if I'm making a purchase decision for from a B2B standpoint, that <laughs> that on me, quote unquote, is a huge on me. Like if that product or solution doesn't work out for the organization. So you need to understand who you're doing business with. You need to understand the brand as a whole. It's not just great, we're gonna spend fifty thousand dollars on this product. It's okay, we're spending fifty thousand dollars on this product from this company who, who was founded in so-and-so. These are, mm-hmm. you know, their partners. This is who they work with already. This is what their employee base looks like. It encompasses all of that. And social media is so important because when you're looking into companies to buy a product from, you can see all of that information on a LinkedIn profile. It's all there. The capabilities are all there. I love it. And yeah, and and let's not even talk about if you're working on a monthly like reoccurring revenue model, um, then Mm -hmm. yeah, every time you you want, you want them to the brand or the person that subscribed to whatever your service is to see more of you online than just uh, when they look at their, when they look at their monthly statement and they see that money being debited and the other things, especially if it's a software, like they want to know, they want to see other things from you. It's not enough just to provide the service anymore. And I try to explain that to people a lot the like the, the companies that really do it well um they have the ability to seem larger and connect with the client on more of even an emotional level than maybe larger companies or even more established companies than than theirs and the clients become more forgiving because they they feel more like they're, and they are by the way more on the same side like they're they're on the same side as you they feel part of your company and extension of your company like our podcasting agency clients that's the way it is like we don't always get everything perfect and we don't I mean shocker right no company gets everything perfect every time right but um, they're more forgiving because they feel like, and they are part of our overall company and an extension of what we do. So I love it. I think you nailed it today, Caitlin. Um, so that being said, um, if somebody is listening to this and they want to learn more about um, your work or your writing, or, or they also want to learn more about Sterling, I mean, what's, your, what's the best way for them to connect overall with the brand? Sure. Um, so for me personally, you can find me um, on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. That's where I'm super active. Um, so my Twitter is at Caitlin Brower underscore. Um, I, my Instagram is at kbrower5. Um, and my LinkedIn is just Caitlin Brower. You'll see that I do work at Sterling. So that's the profile to connect with. Um, and then for Sterling, um, head over to www sterlingchecks.com. You can also find Sterling on LinkedIn as Sterling. And then for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, it's at Sterling Chess. Fantastic. Well, Caitlin, really appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, sharing more about your background and all the great work you're doing over at Sterling and the amazing tips on, on what business owners listening to this need to think about when they're doing B2B marketing on LinkedIn or just on any platform. Actually, you covered all of them, really, even within that LinkedIn um, time span. Mm-hmm. Um, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the app iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Marketing, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Caitlin, thanks again for coming on the show.